righty, so today we are gonna cook. Mac and cheese? Mac and cheese. How many of you like mac and cheese? Me, I like it. I like it. You like it? You like mac and cheese? Okay. Like I box for you. Look, like look, look, Angel. Do you like mac and cheese? Yeah. Yeah, you like mac and cheese? I like mac and cheese. Yeah? I like cheese. cheese. Have any of you, okay, have any of you guys made mac and cheese at home? No, my house, my house. So there's many definitions out there for universal design for learning. The definition I go with is making the content and the material accessible for everyone. That is the purpose of UDL. Okay, so it's two pages. There's one with words, and there's one with the pictures. You can decide which one you want to follow along, okay? The steps are the same, so you decide which one you want to you want to look at when you're when we're going over the recipe. So when planning a lesson with Universal Design for Learning in mind, there are four main steps that you kind of think about. And the very first one is what is the goal? You have to be clear in the goal, and then from there everything else can start falling into place. So for the cooking lesson, um, when I do a cooking lesson, I do it as multiple parts, multiple lessons. The goal in my first lesson is about understanding the recipe. Do they know the vocabulary and the terms in that recipe? Measure one quarter Measure cup of butter. One the quarter. See that fraction? What does that say? One, one fourth. Four. 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 One fourth. Wow, four. One fourth. Good. Four. We can also say it as one quarter. Okay, because there's four quarters in a whole, but we can say, so it's one fourth. They're using the next goal is actually the action part, right? I want them to be able to complete the cooking skills. Do they know how to mix? Do they know how to measure? So those are the two goals whenever I do a cooking lesson. And then what, what's next on here? Really Stir oh, with the oh. bowl. With the spoon, with spoon, so good. After the goal is clear, then we look at anticipating barriers. And this was difficult for me because as a special education teacher, I think of my students' skills and I think, oh, this student isn't a strong reader. This student has difficulty writing. But in UDL, we're not looking at the barriers in the student. We're looking at the barriers in the environment and in the curriculum. And so that's the next step is really looking what are the barriers that might make it difficult for the student to access the lesson? Some barriers that I've anticipated for a cooking lesson is the text, right? A lot of recipes are very text heavy, right? So I need to think a way, I need to think around that. How can I present this recipe to my students with maybe less text? or in a way that is more visual for them. So that would be one of the barriers that I anticipate. One, you're right here. So you poured in the macaroni. See, add the macaroni. So as I'm anticipating barriers, the next step then would be the learner variability. And to me, I think these steps almost happen simultaneously. Because as I'm thinking about the way my students are different, I'm thinking about the barriers that may happen you know, that might be there for them. So I really feel like those two steps go hand in hand. And so I'm thinking about my students' variability, but it may be changing. It may depend on the day. I might have to acknowledge that, well, it, you know, I'm gonna cook on a Friday. Have they been gone all week? That may change how they come into the day. And so what, where I'm just thinking about all those ways that the students might be different on that day. You are going to sequence the steps of the recipe. This is what's gonna tell me that you're ready to cook. You have a choice. You may either do it in words where you use these words in the box. I'm gonna ask the students to sequence the recipe to show me that they truly understand the steps that we're about to do, right? And so they could refer back to the video and then sequence it, pause the video and put it in sequence. They could use their recipe that's in front of them, either version, and they could put it in sequence. They might sequence with pictures. So some of my students might cut out the steps and decide to glue them in order. Some of my students could fill in a little summary with words provided to them, and they could fill the in the blanks. So those will be the options that they have for the assessment piece. So I'm gonna have you guys tell me which one you would like to make. 
Okay. All right. Okay. So let's see. That was me. You want to start, Andrew? Okay, Andrew. Come up here. Which one do you want to make? Hmm. I want to make uh, this one. You want the hot one? Yeah. Okay, come here. Write your name above it. So knowing about the barriers, anticipating the barriers that I'm going to have, knowing some of my students, the text is going to be a barrier for them, right? Also knowing that some of my students are picky eaters. So the options of what we're making might pose to be a barrier. It might be something that they say, I don't want to eat that. And now are they willing to even participate, right? Um, so after I've thought about that, then some things that I've put into place, some options is I'm going to have a video. So the students, all of the students are going to be able to watch the video first um, that shows step by step the recipe, the process. After that, then I have the recipe both in print only and in picture supported. So some students, they can choose and it's going to be double sided. So everyone gets the same recipe and the students will get to choose what side they want to follow along with. Do they want to look at the text or do they want to look at the pictures to support them? The UDL framework has three parts, engagement, representation, and action and expression. And so as I'm looking at the ways my students are gonna engage with the lesson, I'm taking those in consideration. So are there different ways that the students can show me what they've learned, right? And are there different ways that I'm gonna represent the information to the students? So the video versus the paper, the recipe on paper, those are different ways of representation. Right, My student's expression comes into place on, do they want to cut and paste the sequence or are they gonna complete a worksheet? That's their expression and the way that they are showing me what they've learned. Since I've started planning lessons with Universal Design for Learning in mind, I've really seen the students choosing the challenge and they're taking ownership of it. I'm not telling them they have to do this one. So there's no complaining. Right, they're taking ownership. No, I wanna challenge myself today. This is what I wanna do. So that's been a really big positive, seeing that them taking the challenge and also less resistance. Okay. They're more willing to do the work because they had choice. Right? You can use your recipe that you have in front of you or you can say, Miss Holm, can I use the video? And I'll give you the video to watch. You can watch the video too. You want the video? Okay. Alrighty, so that is your choice.